Greetings, fellow crusaders of common sense, dissenters of dismal drama, and loyal soldiers in the war against the absolute absurd that's happening around us. Today, we're going to parachute right into the heart of Hollywood's battlefield. And spoiler alert, the news from Bloomberg is actually, well, Hollywood is in a spectacular nosedive. Surprise! But of course, dear audience, let me unveil the truth behind the headlines, the dirty little secret that they won't utter out loud. That's right, folks. Hollywood's broken, and Bloomberg said so. Here we go! So Bloomberg has given us a revelation, and it's not your usual Hollywood glamour headline. The business is broken, they say. Cable TV's hemorrhaging viewers, we've talked about that. The movie business is still licking its wounds from the global crisis, or that's what they'd have you believe. And streaming, the supposed savior to all of this is, uh, well, a giant uh, money pit, for lack of a nicer way to say it. Of course, what they conveniently forget to say all the time is to mention the real reason behind Hollywood slump. It's a creative catastrophe fueled by politics. The global crisis isn't to blame, and the garbage they've served us is kind of the real reason that nobody wants to participate in Hollywood anymore. We're going to dissect this so-called uh, not recovered from the global crisis excuse and we're going to talk about all the films that succeeded like Top Gun Maverick, Spider-Man No Way Home, Oppenheimer, The Sound of Freedom of course from a small independent bunch of folks, and uh, well Barbie, Super Mario Brothers, and uh, well many, many more. So the real problem isn't all of that noise, right? It's the political correctness, the emasculation of heroes, and the substituting substance with virtue signaling, which isn't much of a story at all. And if it is, it's a bad one. So let's dive into the streaming abyss, right? The media companies went on a spending spree. Uh, they spent $500 million for The Office, which had some payoffs for Netflix, Friends, same thing, South Park, whatnot. But surprise, people are fed up with streaming services like Disney, Paramount+, Plus, Warner Brothers Discovery. And of course, all of them went into austerity mode. The only one that seems to be surviving is Netflix, but uh, for how much longer? Well, maybe a while if they decide to pull the politics, which to some extent they've started to do. But to be fair, there are some austerity measures over there at Netflix, but why? Well, the flood of new shows it is a deluge of unwanted lectures and proselytizing and forced things here and there. The most watched new show of, uh, of this year was not new at all. It ended its run in 2019. And of course, we've talked about it a lot. That was Suits. It was on top of the streaming platforms for, it seemed, with very few interruptions. And despite the fact that we did have peak TV, it wasn't peak good TV. It was just a ton of TV. I mean, I remember the golden age of TV with characters like Tony Soprano, Walter White, they were flawed, but compelling humans. Now we have a bunch of purple haired virtue signaling stereotypes that no sane person will be able to connect with. We're deprived of uh, the joy of judgment. You aren't allowed to critique any of these characters nowadays. I mean, you can, but you take it uh, you, as a risk because if you participate in any type of critique on, well, YouTube or any of the other platforms like Twitter, you're likely to be subjected to attacks from similarly quaffed uh, weirdness on the planet Earth right now. Or maybe those are bots. Is that what Elon was talking about? Anyway, the truth is we just would like to see something with right and wrong, good and evil, because that's what stories and escapism is all about. And bringing that to a close in a moral way is kind of a lesson that everybody needs to learn. Now, Bloomberg predicts that the box office and theaters will probably collapse in 2024. I don't have any data to, well, say otherwise, uh, nor would I even extend that effort because it seems like a logical conclusion. I mean, of course, they're pointing in the wrong direction at strikes and global crisis, but global crisis doesn't matter and strikes were a self-inflicted wound that they could really truly easily bounce back from if they had anything worthwhile to produce. I mean, honestly, to use a card reference, we should call a spade. And Snow White was postponed because of a lot of, well, to use a word that's not gonna make me popular on YouTube, woke tartar, and yes, I stole that obviously from 
one of the riders over there at Breitbart. But of course it's applicable as it would be to anything like the new Captain America film which got delayed because well <laughs> early on it was quite disastrous and it's not these external factors. It's Hollywood's ideological bent that's uh, causing all this chaos. I mean, you honestly don't have to look further than the recent floptastic, the Marvels, to recognize that uh, there's something very, very wrong in Denmark, or however that goes. I guess that would be Hollywood, right? And yet it's all attributable to one thing, the conclusion, which is Hollywood's free fall is not due to unforeseen circumstances but to self-inflicted woke. It's a battle cry of woke and preachiness that disregard the audience instead of, you know, I don't know, allowing them to escape and enjoy a story with deeply flawed humans that either become better or become worse. The story doesn't have to be always about good and evil. Sometimes it can be about an internal struggle, but what it can't be about is division fest because that just doesn't work. If you wanna see why America's so divided now, look at its entertainment. So the proselytizing has come back to haunt them. And we, the viewers, are casting our votes with our, well, remote controls, if you're talking about streaming, or with our wallets, if you're talking about the theatrical releases. We're just not spending our money anymore. And people have, are now extending cord cutting to cutting off streaming services as well. Do you want to be one of those streaming services? Disney is. So we're choosing sanity over sanctimony and reason, well, over divisiveness. I don't know how you arrive at any other conclusion. Now, my friends, it's your turn. What's your take on Hollywood's nosedive? Do you think I'm correct? Are you still rooting for a creative revival? Or have you embraced the classics of yesteryear? Because there isn't a lot in between. Do you think Hollywood can recover? Looking pretty doubtful. Please share your thoughts down in the comments section below. And remember, be sure to take care of yourself, take care of others, and until next time,